Well, we're back up here on Lake Winnipeg, and I tell you what, if you love to walleye fish and you love to ice fish, I mean, this is where dreams are made. You've got the potential to catch really big fish. But the other thing about Winnipeg that I think gets unsaid is that it's a walleye factory. I mean, a tough day out here, you can still catch a lot of fish, you know? And I've often joked that a tough day on Lake Winnipeg would be a great day on a lot of other places, you know? And so on Winnipeg right now, there's a lot of 20 to 24 inch fish, but you know, Tell you what, there's still no better place in the world to try to catch a fish over 30 inches, you know, through the ice. And so the season's long up here, and it's just a great place to come. And so we've got a team of people up here with us. I mean, this isn't a place where you come out by yourself. It's big water, so you bring, you know, a group of your best buddies and fish hard. And with just many more lines in the water, people fish, and you kind of network a little bit and use a teamwork approach because they tell you what, you need a team out of Winnipeg. It's massive, and it's easy to be in the wrong place, and there's, you know, really no limit to where these fish can be. And so we've got a group of anglers here with us and uh, kind of a deal where we come up here every year, you know, bring a group of us up here. We just fish hard and, and it's just an incredible place if you love to ice fish. So you know, these fish on Lake Winnipeg, I mean, they're moving all the time and that can be a blessing and a curse, but you know, we're basically just picking spots. I mean, we might be picking depth range, or we might be picking something off of a general contour. There's not a lot of structure out here, but there are areas where these channels of the Red River come in. There's some big creeks that come in, provide currents, and the shiners move up here in the fall, and I think that's what drives this whole winter fishery. But, you know, we're just fanning out in a spot. You know, we've got, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I think there's six of us fishing here, so I mean, that's a good number to have. And we're just fanning out, spreading out in a general area and, you know, say give it 15, 20 minutes, see what we mark, see how much activity there is. Sometimes you'll get in spots where it's like a dead sea where there's just nothing and then you just, you know, you don't have to spend as much time in those spots. But if you start marking bait fish, start marking fish, start seeing some activity, then you can kind of slow down. But a lot of times, you know, we're making some pretty big moves and, and uh, it's not necessarily a deal where we're going to drill 50 holes in a spot and try to fish every hole. Just drill a hole, sit for 15 minutes because these fish are moving so much and just see if there's any activity and nothing happened then you just make another move but you know don't move 50 yards away move you know 500 yards move to just to a general area because you can almost break this up into quadrants you know and it's a lot like i compared a lot to like trolling on lake erie you know you just have to find these general areas where these fish are these fish these schools are big and so we're in our first spot here right now and we'll give it you know maybe 15 20 minutes and just kind of compare notes and just see what we collectively find Coming in. Oh. There we go. It's a nice one. That's a 25, 26. And she won't give me her, her jawbone there for a... Beautiful fish. It's time to put her back down. Thanks very much. Away she goes. Can't say enough for Lake Winnipeg. Wonderful fish. This will be my 25th year in business. Fish cats all summer long. Walleye in the fall and winter. Persistence is perhaps the, the one factor. Um, the other would be just knowing and learning about the, the species that you're, you're after. What, what kinds of behaviors they have and what's the relationship between them, the place that they're at and the food that they're eating, the forage, and then, you know, how to present the bait. A large part of my business too is to, about relationship. So it would be about people that I fish with that provide me with information or folks that have fished with me over time and, you know, continue to fish with me. I, uh, I believe that's a really important part of my business as well, is the relationship that I have with folks. Why don't 
take your picture. Yeah, come on. So, I had a dead stick set over here because when I set my rod down and the, the other rod holding, I was only fishing one hole. I uh, came back and there's a walleye there sitting there looking at my dead stick. So you know what? I decided I'm gonna put a dead stick down in the second hole and look what happened. You know, they wanted that. Uh, what I did is I tail hooked my minnow. So I just tail hooked my minnow on the leech flutter spoon and just let that minnow sit down there and swim around basically. And that enticed this one to bite. See you next time when you turn into a 10 pounder. That's what we're really up here for. We really are uh, coming to Lake Winnipeg. It's all about catching that uh, 30 plus inch fish, you know, 10 pound fish. You don't catch a lot of them down in the States, Minnesota there, but when we come up here, the opportunity of catching a giant walleye is, it's really good. It's phenomenal fishing up here. And they're just big fish. They fight, they fight nice. And it's, it's really fun pulling a big old 30 inch up through the hole. You know, so you come up to Lake Winnipeg, I mean, yes, the elements can be tough, you know, and this is not a place for whiners, you know, you don't want to bring people up that are going to complain or, oh, we haven't caught a fish today or whatever, because the lows are going to be low, but the highs are going to be high, so you're going to have these ups and downs, and so you want to have people around you that can handle the downs, you know, and so we come up here, we just bring a, a fun group, and that's part of the camaraderie is, you know, you just... You know, you bring some of your buddies. So we've got Max with, we've got Luke. He's kind of the guy that takes care of us as far as making sure we have things to eat and drink. Otherwise we'd die out here. He thinks about things that, you know, none of the rest of us worry about, you know, and then uh, Scott and Shelly, they've been up here with us before. And, you know, you just want to have people that just aren't going to complain. Everybody puts a shoulder in and gets the work done and, um, you know, and, and just go out and fish hard. But, uh, the, there's a lot of commodity when you come up here and do this and that's part of the that's one of the best parts of this whole trip is you, know, you just you get your buddies up here and you go up here and you, and you ride into battle you know and and not every day is going to be great not every day is going to be easy but the good days are as good as it gets Come on. Come on, I just want to see you. Oh. Long and lean. There we go. Oh, look how slender that fish is. That fish is, looks like a greenback. But it ain't built like a greenback. Boy, they're usually just heavy up here. There she goes. Yes! <laughs> Beautiful. He bit three feet under the ice. Oh, that is a beautiful, my first greenback. Wow, that is beautiful. Better one. Beautiful greenback, eh? Look at that. She's uh, she's performing. And the really green one today, you can see how green she is. Has everything to do with the limestone uh, base in the water and the forage hanging around that limestone that, you know, they pick up that limestone color as well. These fish migrate all the way from the North Basin. The water's clear in the North Basin. If you've ever been up north, 
the water it deposes, the sediment deposes from the Red River as it moves north and Winnipeg River to some extent. But you can see how green she is. And away she goes. Well, we're just running and gunning, I guess, how you describe this. We've been moving around a lot, which is kind of, uh, that's kind of the program on Lake Winnipeg here. I mean, you've got to embrace the grind. And so we've been fishing outside, and we're just trying to cover water. We give each spot, you know, 10, 15 minutes, and we're just trying to make big moves here. Well, we came here to this first spot today, and put down our holes and looked for signs of life. We did uh, see some um, bait, not much, but we have been picking off uh, the odd good fish and uh, we're gonna be sticking around for a bit and when that dries up, we'll be moving on. But that's pretty much the pattern here in Lake Winnipeg. Drill, look, catch some fish, work them, and when they're not biting anymore, you move on. Good one. It's pumping. Got that big hook shape going? Yeah. There she is. You got another good one here. Got one girl. Look at the size of these things. <laughs> there you go. I got her. All right. I'll just get that hook out for you. Just an average lake with a big green back. <laughs> okay, where you go, girl? I'll just give her a little couple of... There she goes. Woo, that's a lively one. And that's breeding stock for the future, that size of fish. That's what keeps this fishery healthy. And uh, we want to put them back. You know, we've been up here in January before, and I like January because I feel like the days are shorter where your bite windows are closer together. And it just seems like a lot of big fish get caught up here in January, whereas this place gets a lot busier in March. But, you know, the conditions can be brutal too. You know, we've been so lucky that it's just been nice enough where we can fish outside, you know, as far as just trying to find fish and move around a little easier. Add some context, you know, the first day that we were out here, you know, we had a tougher day, which you're going to have tough days on Lake Winnipeg. I mean, you see these pictures of these big fish. You know, it's not like you just catch them everywhere. You know, I mean, the, the good days are as good as it gets, but some days you got to work for them, and some days just, some days this lake wins. And so the first day we were out here, you know, we caught some fish, but we didn't catch anything real big. But again, you know, we probably caught between six of us fish, and we maybe caught, I don't know, maybe 30 walleyes. Maybe the biggest one was 24 inches, which if you were anywhere else in the world, you know, that'd be a great day. But up here, you know, your expectations get out of whack. You know, but uh, we kept moving and trying different things. And sometimes, you know, the fish have to meet you halfway. Sometimes they'll just get some bite windows where, you know, you can be in spots and marking and fish. And then the next day those fish eat. And so we're starting to see some big fish here now. There we go. Got one on here. I don't like a nicer fish with a bigger mark that came in. Need to get her started up that hole. That's what we're here for. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> wow, look at that thing. It's a nice one. <clears throat> you know, we've uh, been a slow bite and um, I was just out there in 13 feet of water and uh, these guys were seeing some fish in a little bit shallower, about a foot shallower. So it's like, you know what? I'm gonna come in on this other side of these guys. It seems like there's a bunch of shiners coming through here rolling through and um, I just moved in and um, caught a nice one. Uh, uh, man, these things are fun, I tell you. Because they just kind of come out of nowhere and just come up there and they just smack it. It's just, uh, it's 
football rips are right out of your hand and that thing is just, uh, it's crazy what these things look like. They're just fat. Oh, baby. That's why we're here though. Lake Winnipeg, giant. This kind of feel, see how big this, you know, I'm fishing an eight inch hole and these fish, they just fill up the whole hole. See ya. We'll be back. We're gonna catch another one of them and it's gonna be bigger than that one. So I'll show you some of the lures that we like to use on Lake Winnipeg, which, you know, for the most part, I mean, you're using a lot bigger, more aggressive presentations, big water, big fish. I think sometimes you just have to fish big and bold so these fish can find you. This water's typically got, you know, stain, dark water. So this is a peg flutter spoon. I mean, we've caught a lot of, a lot of big walleyes on these big flutter spoons. And besides these big flutter spoons, you can kind of tone it down some days where Let's see here. Oh, right here. The super leech flutter spoon. You can see that lure there. You got to pinch down the barbs on all your lures up on Winnipeg. But that's just kind of a heavier spoon that stays in the cone angle straight up and down a little more. But uh, that's a great one. And then this is the place where rattle baits are really effective. And so, like this here is just a Just a booyah rattle bay, but live targets are really good. Ripping wraps, uh, the rattling shads from Northland. I mean, they're they're really effective out here, especially on you know these bigger fish. You get a little bit more of an aggressive bite. You know, and every once in a while, like every place, I mean, sometimes a bite can be off a little bit, and you might have to scale down a little bit. And so this here is just a ribbon fl leech flutter spoon. I just got a little bit of Procure scent on there, and I just tied a stinger hook. I upsize the treble hooks, I just put a whole shiner on there. And so if I got to use a little bit of finesse on them, that's what I use. But, uh, you know, just a lot of, a lot of big flutter spoons, rattle baits. Big thing is, you know, you got to pinch down the barbs. And so use big hooks. I mean, upsize the hook in a lot of cases. You know, a lot of spoons, you know, they really realistically don't have a big enough hook for the spoon if you're fishing up here. You got to pinch down the barbs. A lot of times, you know, use like a 10 pound braid. You can use a fluorocarbon leader, but realistically with this stained water, you don't have to, okay? But the biggest thing that I follow with these pinch down barbs is tighten up your drag a little bit and just winch the fish in. Don't pump the rod, don't play the fish. Just hold the rod in one spot and just slowly crank. Crank that fish up and get it started up the hole and, you know, get them in. But, uh, you know, if you try to pump or work these fish a little bit with those barbless hooks, these these big fish especially, I mean, these hooks just fall out. And so you have to make some tackle adjustments, some rod line adjustments when you're up here, you know, compared to walleye fishing on a lot of other waters. Oh my God! Let's go! Yes! Oh my. Gosh, that, that's what you come to win a pig That for. is it. That's one of them giants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got my green back. Oh. Look at that fish, guys. Wow, that fish came up off bottom, and you, you could just tell that that was the one. I don't, I don't think I breathed for almost a minute. That is my favorite part. Go! Yeah! Oh! Nice job. Oh. Way to go. Good job. Fish with a bunch of different people up here. We fished with Donovan over at Blackwater Cats. I caught one of the biggest walleyes I've ever caught through the ice with him and caught a lot of big fish that particular winter. We've come up and just kind of winged it on our own. We fished with Matt Cornell, fishing with Dan now. So there's there's a lot of great guides. There's some great bait shop right here in Selkirk. We can get some pretty good information. Lee Nolden runs that. And, uh, you know, just met a lot of friends over here over the years. You know, so when you do come up here, though, you have to have the right expectations in the sense that I think what people enjoy about this is, yeah, the big fish potential. You know, there's 28 inch fish up here that'll weigh well over 10 pounds up here to put them on a scale because of the amazing girth that these fish have. This is a place where you actually have a chance to catch a 14 or 15 pound walleye through the ice. There's not many places where you can even say that, you know, where that possibility even exists.
coming up. There we go. All right. Oh, gosh. So just got this one. Uh, marked a nice mark on the bottom. Came up hard. One and hit. Pop, popped it a couple times above above the the mark and just came up and and smoked it. So nice fish. Fun fight. Get her back. See you later. Thank you. Lake Winnipeg. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Doesn't get any better, man. I tell you, it's fun.